Well, I'm a fourth generation minister. I started preaching when I was 22, 23, 24 years of age. We began to travel into small rural churches in the United States. We conducted what was called revivals. And then what began to happen is the crowds got very large. The altar services became very intense and very exciting. So going back to the revivals, is there like a momentum that builds when you do that? Or yes. what was the experience? Absolutely. Now in every meeting, there would be one pivotal night where something unusual would happen. There's something that people call, it's a biblical term, the anointing. Mm -hmm. And the anointing is best described as the tangible presence of God. Jesus was the founder of the faith. And when his name is spoken in faith, all of a sudden people began to talk about miracles happening. And it's happening all over the world with visions and dreams and experiences that people are having. Faith in his name means that you believe that when you pray, God will hear. Mm. You believe that when you say the name of Jesus, that the Father in heaven, that he will know that name and recognize that name. And then through the power of the Holy Spirit, he will bring forth an answer to your prayer, or in some instances, a very miraculous answer through the faith in the name of Jesus. To every man, Paul said in Romans, is given the measure of faith. Mm -hmm. What is love? Where did it come from? Where does compassion come from? The desire to help people in need. See, these are all characteristics that Jesus said were from God. Gentleness, tenderness, mercy. They come because we're made in the image of God. And if we're made in God's image and his likeness, we're going to have the same characteristics that God has when he looks to the earth and sees those people whom he made, whom he loves, mm -hmm. we're gonna to look to one another and have that same love and compassion the way the Father had for us. And so faith, everybody's got it. And one of the things that Jesus said is in Matthew 24, 14, he said, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations and then the end would come. So how can all nations get the gospel and the answer is technology right and so we literally at our ministry use whatever we can use to reach more people and that's the miracle of being alive right now touch your eyes tonight lord she may see clearly in jesus name praise the lord hey open your eyes and look this way hallelujah give jesus the praise when you look at Christ, there was always joy where he showed up. Right. I mean, people are being healed. People are being delivered from oppression, from evil spirits. I mean, he multiplies bread and fish and feeds everybody. Right. You know, I mean, that'll get you a crowd everywhere you preach. <laughs> we need to judge Jesus by what we read about him in the word of God. Because Jesus is who we're serving. I see Christianity is joyful. This whole walk with God is a joy. Now, it is not easy to be a believer. And so to say that we're not gonna be persecuted is not true. And another reason I think that believers who are persecuted have such joy is they look at that scripture that Jesus said, it says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and despised the shame, but is now set down on the right hand of the Father. He endured the cross knowing the joy that was coming. Right. So I think a lot of times believers around the world that are persecuted, the reason they can hold on is they know, you know what, I don't have to live this way forever. The joy that's out there waiting for them, they know that Christ is gonna come back to rule and reign a thousand years. They're gonna be a part of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So they have this great joy as a result of it.